Hello, this is Dr. Tom with a lesson on conservation of energy, and we're going to look at uh, a couple of alternate forms of the Bernoulli equation. Uh, this information is in the uh, reference handbook uh, under fluid flow. Okay, first we're going to look at what I refer to as the ME form. We've been working with the CE, or civil engineering form. This is what I refer to as the ME form of the equation. We start with the CE form, P over gamma, V squared over 2G plus Z equal constant, where gamma is equal to rho G. And we multiply through by the acceleration of gravity G to give the following. So we multiply each term. And what we'll have is uh, G cancels in the first term and uh, also the second term and will be added to the third term. So we'll end up with P over rho now instead of P over gamma. V squared over 2 plus GZ equals a constant. So again, uh, this one is what I could call uh, the ME form of the equation. The fact is this is probably the least useful of the equations because each term has uh, units of velocity squared. It's just, it just doesn't, doesn't work as easy uh, as the, uh, the other two. The, uh, the civil I use as a default and uh, uh, in certain kinds of problems, which we're going to show here, the AE form uh, is, uh, is very appropriate. Okay, so to do the AE form, uh, we start back with the, the CE form of the equation, again, where gamma equals rho G. Multiply through by gamma, uh, gamma in the first term and rho G in the second term, and then we'll have a gamma in the third term. Okay, so what we'll end up with is P plus one half rho V squared plus rho G Z equal a constant. Okay, so again, this could be, I call this sort of the AE form. You're going to see uh, why, uh, why that's uh, the case here shortly. Uh, it's probably the most useful uh, Bernoulli equation as each term uh, is, uh, has units of pressure. And uh, when um, certain kinds of problems show up, this, uh, this particular form uh, works much better than the CE and, of course, definitely better than the, uh, the ME that I call. Okay, so and when there's very little change in elevation, and for the problems that uh, that we have associated with this, there is very little uh, change in elevation uh, with the uh, with the fluid. You're flowing over something, and even though it has dimensions, those dimensions are small compared to everything else. So really, what you have is the the, the p plus one half rho v squared equal a constant. Okay, so what we look at is the first term P is the, the static pressure. The second term is called the dynamic pressure, one half rho V squared. Uh, and those two added together need to be a constant. And we can actually evaluate that constant uh, as uh, uh, putting in uh, V equals zero. Okay, so if you put in V equals zero, you get what is called the stagnation pr uh, pressure. Uh, you see it as P sub zero. Sometimes you see it as P sub infinity, the little lazy eight there, but uh, P infinity uh, as, as the, uh, the pressure at a distance. Uh, so it is uh, also called the, uh, the total pressure. So uh, this is a very useful, very useful equation for lots of, uh, lots of problems. Now, because of the, the term that's in there, uh, the dynamic pressure, this is, a, this is the place to talk about drag. Drag is the force uh, acting on a body as it passes through a fluid uh, and is opposite to the direction, obviously, of the motion of that body. There's actually three types of drag. Form drag, which is the, the one that uh, is associated with what we're doing now. Skin friction drag, which we'll talk about when we get to uh, with uh, uh, Newton's law of viscosity and, and real flow would, uh, would account for that, although we're not going to do anything with uh, skin friction drag as far as bodies are concerned, but that's where that comes in. And then there's uh, induced drag. Uh, that's the drag due to the lift vector. Uh, we're not going to do that, but uh, uh, having my bachelor's in aero uh, for a wing, uh, the, lift, uh, the lift force uh, vector is uh, slightly tilted to the rear, so the component uh, of that uh, vector uh, backward is uh, called induced drag and can be very significant uh, kind of thing. But we're not going to be talking about that. So, But uh, I did want to at least get, uh, get this into the, uh, into the presentation about the three different types. 
the drag that you're going to be faced with with the ME is really the one associated with uh, form drag. Uh, it is a, a um, the dynamic pressure uh, times the a frontal uh, area, the uh, what what you would see if you just the, the the rectangle or whatever it is of the front times the coefficient of uh, of drag, uh, which represents the streamlining of it. The the larger it is, the less streamlined. There you can see CD is two for a flat plate, which is like uh, f uh, the pressure hitting the side of your house, uh, or a point three for a circular rod. I can't. But also, I think by 1.15 for a Lamborghini uh, car, that sort of a thing. Uh, that's where that drag coefficient comes in. So I like I like this particular form of the equation because it kind of shows you the three parts of form drag: the dynamic pressure, one half rho v squared, the area, and then this coefficient of drag. However, in the reference handbook, if you uh, put in drag force, you'll be taken to this particular equation, which is just just has all the terms multiplied together. Uh, you don't really see the um, the, the, the three uh, aspects of it, but that's but so you don't have to remember this particular equation. Uh, you can just use it as it is. Okay, well, let's look at a couple of examples of different types of orientations uh, that uh, uh, that you could see in the in the exam, and these are uh, back once once you look at this particular picture, kind of know I don't know about this. Um, I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, this would not be one that I would work um, uh, the first time through, or even the second time through in the passes uh, that you do in either the first section or the second first part or second part of the exam here. Uh, but it can be done and. And uh, what it involves is uh, finding the flow rate using uh, this manometer and some different kinds of orientations here. This particular thing contains water. Uh, it's going to come up and hit that opening of the tube and, uh, and, and stagnate. Um, that's where that stagnation pressure comes in, it means the velocity will go to zero and it will, because of that pressure, will push the manometer fluid uh, around so that, uh, that uh, it's been actually been pushed down uh, uh, to where where the, uh, the difference in the uh, elevations of the manometer fluid is uh, two inches. And so this is, uh, this is where you've, again, where you've got uh, velocity zero and all, and this just uh, um, is a very big application for uh, the AE form, okay? Okay, so uh, since the elevations are equal, uh, well, this is, uh, again, a great uh, application AE form. Uh, point one will be uh, where what we're looking at is uh, the velocity away from the, uh, the uh, opening there, and two will be the stagnation point. Um, uh, where the velocity is equal to zero. Uh, note the common height in H. That will show up. That will go away as we're going to see here. And uh, note that I've got a P left and P right in the in the manometer fluid. That's just the the uh, the principle that the pressure is the same at the same depth uh, in a uh, in a fluid. And so therefore, uh, those have to be equal. So what we're going to be doing is uh, calculating P left, uh, which will have P1 in it and P right, which will have P2 in it and the common H there. Okay, so the Bernoulli equation becomes P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared uh, equal the P2, the stagnation pressure, V2 equals zero. Uh, you can rearrange now for V1 squared. That's what we're really looking for. And then if we have V, we can multiply by A to get Q. So uh, V1 squared is two times the pressure difference divided by the density of water. Okay, so what we get from the manometer, and again, this is where a lot of folks have it's, it's a manometer they uh, uh, want to run run away. But again, just just p left equals p right. Okay, and on the on the left, then uh, you've got the pressure, and as you go down in in a fluid, uh, uh, you add. So you got p1 plus gamma of the water times h plus then gamma of the mercury. The mercury this is a mercury barometer uh, manometer and uh, times the two inches uh, uh, to get down to the P left. On the right, you've got P2, but now you've got the water is both H plus two inches. Okay, so, so what you have is P1 on the left, P2 on the right, and all you got to do is do some algebra and just watch things. 
Okay, so maybe this is a lot in one little term here, but the top line is uh, is just rearranging to get P2 minus P1, which is what we're looking for. And so we've got the two quantities in the brackets. And when you expand those, you can see that in the second line, you've got gamma W times H, but then the first term in the in the second one up there, you've got a minus gamma water times H, so those two go away. So the common height H goes away, so it, that will not enter into the problem. What you'll be left with is gamma of the mercury times 2 inches minus gamma of the water times 2 inches. So now we can collect terms. We now got gamma of mercury minus gamma of water times the 2 inches. We can pull out gamma of water and have the specific gravity of the mercury minus the specific gravity of the water, which is 1 times 2 inches. Of course, uh, we still need that 2 inches big flag there on units, but we'll get there. Okay, so that, that's sort of what we've got with P1 minus P2. So what we can do is now put in the information we have. Okay, so the gamma of the water is 62.4 pounds a cubic foot. The specific gravity of the mercury 13.6, or if they may give it to you, or if you looked it up, it might be 0.57, but I don't think that would change your A, B, C, D answer. Uh, minus 1, then times 2 inches. Well, we got to get that into feet now. So we could have done it earlier, but uh, 1 foot over 12 inches. And what we'll end up with is... Um, We've got pounds per cubic foot uh, times a foot, so we'll end up with pounds per square foot. So that got the right units. Now we can multiply everything out and get 131 for our pressure difference. Okay. And so we go over here to our V1 squared equation. We've got 2 times our pressure difference we just found divided by the, the row of water. Well, that's really gamma over G. You could remember that it was uh, like 1.94, but uh, I don't. I just, I know the gamma, gamma of water is 62.4, some number like that, divided by G. Uh, the um, Units will work out. You got feet squared. We'll end up with feet squared second squared because the pounds will cancel. Uh, feet uh, uh, feet per second squared will go in the numerator. We have another one over uh, feet cubed over the feet squared gives another feet. So we got feet squared second squared. Take the square root and get 11.63 feet per second as our velocity. Okay. And, of course, the volumetric flow rate is going to be VA, so our velocity, all we now need is the area of the tube. It's 6 inches, and we need to convert that to feet squared as usual, so we've got those two. Multiply uh, that times um, the velocity that we got, and we get 2.28 cubic feet per second, which we can then uh, use our standard conversions to get uh, a little over about 1,023 uh, gallons per minute. Okay, so when you see the see a manometer, this kind of a thing, uh, uh, the the uh, AE form uh, is uh, really much better. Now the, the you're not going to be using the ME form. I'll be using the CE form, which is in the uh, reference handbook, but the AE form is not. But uh, it is uh, sort of used in some of the practice uh, uh, NCS practice exam problems. So uh, so they do use it. And again, as I said, uh, that may show up in a future reference handbook. And I wanted you to be familiar with it because this this is a, uh, these kinds of problems are really great for for the AE form. Okay, well, let's look at another orientation that you might see here. We, we want, again, determine the volumetric flow rate uh, of this converging section of the tubing. Uh, and this has got air in it. Um, specific gravity of the manometer fluid is 0.8. So this is a little bit different manometer fluid uh, because this is air versus um, versus water from what we had with the previous one. Uh, you're given the uh, specific weight of the air, got just 12 newtons per cubic meter, very small number here, uh, and assume, of course, no losses. And we want this at the uh, uh, at the converging section there at 8 centimeters. So once we find the velocity, uh, that uh, will be the dimension that we'll use for the area here. Now what happens is the, the flow comes in and uh, is stagnated there and pushes the manometer fluid down uh, and uh, raises it up 6 centimeters over there on the right. So again, I'm giving you two different sort of orientations so that you would feel comfortable with either one. They, they both go the exact same way. Okay, so uh, there at one, we've got um, the uh, stagnation uh, uh, pressure and then um, 
at two we'll have our um, uh, pressure plus the one half rho v squared term so uh, uh, that's just like we did before note again the common h there uh, we have h uh, air all the way down on one all the way uh, from one down to p left but on at p right we've got air uh, for h but then the manometer fluid for six centimeters okay so again p left is going to equal p right Okay, so writing out our Bernoulli equation, again, now what we have is the stagnation is at 1, so we've got P1 equal P2 plus 1 half rho air V2 squared, solve for V2 squared, uh, get 2 times the pressure difference now, P1 minus P2. Notice in the previous example we had P2 minus P1, so be careful with the algebra there, uh, divided by the, uh, the density of air. Okay, so from the manometer again, P left equal P right. Well, on the left, we've got uh, P1 plus gamma the air H plus 6 centimeters. On the right, what you have is P2 plus gamma the air for H plus gamma the manometer fluid for 6 centimeters. Okay, so now we're just going to rearrange that to get P1 uh, minus P2. Okay, so we do that here. Now again, what, what happens, as you can see, is we've got gamma of air times H from the first term and gamma air, minus gamma air times H from the second term. Well, those will cancel. Then we'll have gamma of the manometer fluid times 6 minus uh, gamma of the air times 6. So again, we get uh, uh, gamma of the manometer minus gamma of the air times 6 centimeters. And again, we know we're going to be needing to convert that to meters at some point, and we will. So that's the specific specific gravity of the manometer that we're given times the gamma of uh, water minus the gamma of air times 6. Okay, so we can put in the things that we know. Uh, 0.8 for the specific gravity of the manometer fluid. The gamma of water is uh, 9,800 newtons per cubic meter minus the 12 newtons per cubic meter, so not, not very much there, times 6 centimeters. Well, now it's the time to get that into meters, so uh, divide that by 100 uh, centimeters, and, uh, and we end up with uh, 470 newtons per meter squared, okay? because what we have is newtons per cubic meter times a meter, so that gives us the right units. Okay, well now what we can do is um, put that into our equation, our P1 minus P2, our rho, what we need, notice that we need the rho of the air, so we have 12 newtons per cubic meter divided by G, 9.8, so watch that. Uh, we'll get the, the units uh, to be meter squared over second squared, and take the square root, and we get 27.7 meters per second, okay? Okay, so now finding the volumetric flow rate, V2 times uh, A2. Well, A2 again at the uh, uh, at the eight centimeter. Uh, again, uh, we'll get that in centimeters squared. Convert that to meters squared. So now we can multiply that times the velocity that we got. And uh, so when we do that, we get just uh, 0.41 uh, cubic meters uh, per second. Which again, we could uh, uh, well we could convert that. We wouldn't really convert that to liters. Um, uh, liters per minute or whatever because uh, because we're really looking at something with air okay okay well that uh, concludes this uh, this lesson on the alternate forms of Bernoulli equation I hope uh, this uh, the arrow part the AE part will uh, help you uh, work uh, work some problems that I am sure you may be faced with in the exam okay well as always we thank you for allowing us to help you prepare for this exam